Here's some sketches and drawings showing the type of columns that you're going to be working with. We can have here like a square or rectangular in shape column. This when you look at the cross section of the column itself. Sometimes you can have also round sections and the rebars also is going to be placed in this fashion. In a column like this, I will need to have a minimum of four rebars, four vertical rebars. You know, have, after this, I'm going to have tires. So if you look here at the elevation of the column, right, you're going to see here's giving you the column. With the rebars is going to be running through. You're going to have here some tires. So here's the tire implant. This give you one piece of rebar. You saw from here, just wrapped around it, and then it has this hook around the vertical rebar. We have also this round columns. And look at the tie. We call it here a spiral. So in this case, we call this a spiral. It can be only one piece of rebar that goes around. It just goes from the top of the column all the way to the bottom of the column. This is completely different from this type of ties. This ties is going to be separate. Each tie is not connected to the other one. But in here, the ties can be just continuous tie. So the difference between these two columns is not just about the rectangular section versus round section. It is mainly about the tie and how it is connected. The tie here is one piece that you go to spiral, it runs from the top to the bottom, while the tie here is each one is separate. In this type of columns, we call it tie columns because it has ties. While in this type of columns, we call it spiral column because it has a spiral reinforcement. The spiral is going to be this tie that goes around all the way from the top to the bottom. Sometimes also we have this type of composite columns. And as you see here, this gives you like a steel pipe for those concrete. Sometimes this gives you one of the steel sections is going to be encased in concrete section. In all of these types, we have your contribution from the concrete and the reinforcing or the steel to support vertical loads. Some pictures some type of columns. Here's a column, concrete, poured already. Here is columns wrap to keep the moisture within the column. And this shows here some formwork. Look at this, it's giving the formwork itself. And some columns, just reinforcing. No form yet was put around the column. As you see here, you have lots of ties. It's gonna be closely spaced. Let's give you some of the spiral columns. Let's give you usually round columns, large size, mainly used in bridges and maybe some parking structures, some big holes. This is where you are going to put here this big round column. When you look here at the performance of each one of these two types of columns, Look here at the x axis, is giving you the strain in the column due to vertical loads. In the y axis, you have the load that the column is able to support. Both of these two columns, you start to apply loads, you get some strains, and then you see here the curve is going slowly with some curvature. It comes to a point. Some yield is going to happen within the steel of the column itself under compression. So usually, Columns is going to see compression. This compression is going to be supported again by the steel, the reinforcing bars, and by the concrete within the column itself. So at the beginning, we put some load, we get lots of strains. Once we hit the yield, you're going to see here that the column is not supporting lots of additional load, but then instead, you're going to see here lots of strains. Once you get to a point, the column here is going to be start to fail. So now the column, this type column is going to be collapsing. In the spiral column, it has more longer life when it comes to the amount of strain. So look what happened. It is just coming down a little bit, and then it's going to be gaining more strength again. So here, if you look here at the strength, the spiral column 
as you see here, is going to be higher than the strength of five columns. Now the question is, is it because the shape, the rectangular shape versus round shape? Yes, you know. The whole thing here is about, if I may go back here a couple of slides, the whole thing is, is about the type of tie that you put around. Here the tie is continuous. And this spacing, which we call here pitch, this pitch or the spacing is going to be very small. Like if I may give you here some typical values, you can say this gave you about three inches. While in this case, the spacing here, you can see this spacing is about six inches. Now you can imagine the difference between here three inches and six inches, right? So here you have more ties. You have more wrapping around the concrete. Now, once you start here to wrap the concrete, and then you start to tax a little, the more wrapping you have, the more trends that the concrete is going to be at. So this wrapping, we call it confinement. Now you are confining the concrete itself. Just think about this steel pipe filled with concrete. Now we start to load it vertically. It's going to be extremely strong. Why? Because it has this shell around it. This shell is continuous. It provides continuous confinement. This concrete will not fail unless the shell is going to be failing first. Are you guys with me on this? This concrete doesn't have a place to go when you put lots of compression. It cannot expand laterally because it is contained within this pipe. If you want to fail this column, this concrete, first you need to fail this pipe. Same thing in this pipe and the spiral. When you put here more confinement reinforcement, this concrete is not going to be going anywhere. This is why it's going to be showing higher trends than that when you have longer spacing. This is the reason that the concrete here is picking up for the spiral columns because the spiral itself provides more confinement to the concrete. Now, in our case here for columns, we're going to have P sub U, which means the ultimate axial load or the design load on the column, vertical load. We're going to have also PPN. If you like to use this PPN first, I need to look for the fee factor. Now, the reinforcing is going to be in compression. And this here refers to the tension control, transition control. This one, the strain is going to be lower than absolute sub TY. I'm expecting that the fee factor for columns is going to be 0.65, because the columns going to be exposed only to compression. Tight columns is going to be 0.65. Spiral columns is going to be using this the edge line is going to be going here to 0.75. So with that, I can conclude that the fee factor for axial loaded columns is going to be 0.65 for tight columns and 0.75 for spiral columns. Any questions? Yes? Questions? Brian, do you have any questions, Brian? No, no questions. You're good. So can you help me by explaining why the spiral column is going to have higher fee factor? Um, what do you, why do you think that the spiral column is going to have a higher fee factor? Because of the, it's, well, right there it says variation of fee with the net tensile strain. So I'm, I'm assuming it's because of the strain. 
Okay. A minute ago, if I also I still need your help. A minute ago, I was talking about spiral columns versus tight columns. You remember that discussion? Yeah. No. Well, what? What was the conclusion of this spiral versus tight? I I wasn't fully paying attention. My mom was talking to me. I'm I'm sorry. All right. Thank you, Adrian. Can you help me with that? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, the spiral column can carry more load because of the spacing of the ties. Typically, it's three inches as opposed to six inches. So, due to confinement, they can carry more load. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, just so you guys know, from time to time, I'm going to be asking questions. And I actually, I give great for this. Any questions from anyone on what we have just discussed? The reason that spider comes going to show here higher expense. They're good. Hey, can, you repeat it? can you repeat it one more time? Okay, Adrian, please help us. You're the man now. Uh, yeah, so the spiral column, the spacing of the ties is much closer. Yeah, like here versus yeah, here. Three inches typical as opposed to six inches. So because yeah. of that, the concrete has nowhere to go. And that's yeah. called confinement. So confinement is going to be the reason to increase the strength, right? Yes. Okay. And also, this is shown here in this diagram. You see here, the spiral column is able to support higher load than that of the tight column. And so, because of that, the the fee factor is higher. You said. Yes. Okay. Could recognize this issue, and when it comes to spiral columns, they give you a higher fee factor. Okay. It means that the spiral column here are going to have a fee factor multiplied by p sub n. 0.75 while for the tight columns give you 0.65 multiplied by Pn. Okay. All right. Now I'm looking for the tight column, and here is the axial load capacity equation. Because when it comes to the demand, which piece of you you guys know how to do it. You have a beam, it sits on a column, you can find out the reaction, you have dead load, you have life load. Then you have your multipliers, the 1.2, 1.6, and all of this nice stuff, right? Now, how do you figure out the capacity? For tight columns, I have a very simple equation. It's going to be that equation that you're looking at. Here is VPN, the strength. And the strength here is going to be equal to a V factor. Are you looking here at my screen? V factor. And how much is V factor for tight columns? Anyone remembers? Point six five. Point six five. Thank you. And then you have additional multiplier. Here's the fee factor. Additional multiplier, it says here, point eight. Not sure about the reason of this factor yet, but maybe in two lectures from now, we'll figure it out. Or maybe next lecture, let's say, after the exam, most likely. Now, I have here two components. Here's the first one. And here's the second one. First one to account for the concrete contribution to the axial strength. How do I know that? Because it says here 0.85 if prime C times some area. And this term here to account for the steel, the reinforcing vertical reinforcing bar contribution to the strength. It says Fy times AST. So what is AST? AST is the vertical cross-sectional area of all the rebars in the column. Example, if I'm going to go back here. If this rebar is number eight, can someone help me and tell me what is A sub B for number eight? Number eight rebar, how much is A sub B? Cross-sectional area for only one rebar? 0.79. Point 0.79, thank you. Square inch. How about AS in this column for AST equals to how much? 
Let's say I have four rebars, right? Four times 0 0.79. How much is this? Yes. 3.16. 3.16 square inch. Very good. So now I guess we have a good understanding of the meaning of AST. AST is going to be total cross section area of all the rebars going in the vertical direction, longitudinal direction of the cut. So, okay, good. So now I understand this term here, AST. This means that we consider all the steel to be yielding. The con. How about this one, this term here? I understand usually concrete exposed to compression is going to be at 0.85 if prime C. I understand that. But it says here A sub G subtracting AST, meaning this gives be the net cross sectional area of the column. Both of these two terms together is giving you net cross sectional area of the column. Of the concrete within the column. If you look here at A sub G is given the gross section area, like let's say a column 12 by 12 is given 144 square inches, and then you subtract the cross section area of this T. So you have here the net cross section area. As if we are looking at the column here, if you figure out A sub G, which means the total cross section area, subtract the area of the steel, then say multiply by. 0.85 prime C. Area of the steel multiplied by F sub Y. So the equation is very simple, and that's it. This is a whole equation for tight columns. Exposed to only axial load. Now, for the vertical steel ratio, we have minimum and maximum ratio. In concrete slabs, it was 0 0.0018, right? Of the cross section area of the state of the concrete. In beams, I have two equations. In shear, also, I have two equations for the minimum reinforcement in shear. But in here, it just says 1%, and the maximum is going to be 8% of A sub G. So, okay. Now, here's some column and tie arrangements. Sometimes you have four rebars on the column. In this case, you need to have a tie in this way. Can I see my screen? Yes. You see the pointer? Yes. The mouse? OK, very good. All right. I have here different configurations with different amount of vertical rebars, because you can put as many as rebars as you want it, as long as you don't go beyond here the 8% of A sub G. For different distributions, from time to time, you may need to add something that we could here cross time, like in this case and this case, like in this case and this case. There are certain guidelines for it. If the spacing between a vertical bar to a vertical bar is going to be less than six inches, you don't really need to put this cross time, which means this piece. But once you go here more than six inches, you need to add this piece. Same thing, as long as the spacing, clear spacing between a bar to a bar, vertical bar to a vertical bar, is gonna be within six inches, you don't really need to have cross line. But once you go beyond that, you need to add this cross line. Same thing here, less than six inches, I don't need to have here a cross line. Once also this and this is gonna be greater than six inches, put some cross lines. Let's look here for the maximum and the standard tie spacing that you can put in a tight column. 
Look here for this picture. From the top of the rebar, here's the time. This is the top of this rebar, about four and a quarter. It should have been four inches, but this is actually taken from an actual picture that I've taken. And you see here, from here to there is actually eight inches. So this pie is a little bit pushed down, which is okay. Usually you look at the foot, you look at 12 inches and you see if you have four rebars or four ties within this foot. You have a starter, then you have three spaces. The spacing here, of course, you don't want to put too many ties because when you put lots of ties, what's going to happen? It's going to be very tough to install them. It's going to be more expensive, so you'd like to reduce the ties. How can you reduce it? By putting them at the maximum spacing. Maximum spacing here, it says, according to the code, that we have three ways of measuring or coming up with this maximum spacing. You see, the spacing here cannot be larger than 48 times the tie body diameter, which means this guy here. Usually the tie size is number three, number four, number five. Mostly it's gonna be number four. The vertical bars usually will start at number six, number seven, number eight, number nine. So usually the bar size for the vertical rebar is gonna be larger than that of the tie. So the first criteria, your maximum is gonna be 48 times the tie body diameter. Do I have a question here? Uh, no, just on the Okay. The second criteria or the second equation, it says 16 times the vertical bar diameter or longitudinal bar diameter. So it's gonna be 48 of this or 16 of this or the least column dimension. Let's say here that I have the columns 12 by 24. So maximum spacing here is going to be one of the criteria is going to be 12 inches. Since you are in California, you have here six inch maximum for the spacing. So in California, we have four items that you need to satisfy. Other states is only the first three. Okay, let me see one example. It says here, find the maximum design axle load strength. So you're looking for VPN, load strength, right? For the type column of the cross section shown, the column 16 by 16. It says here, check the ties for the spacing. Assume short column, which means no buckling. And of course, everything here that you're talking about, we do not consider any buckling. Strength of the concrete, 4,000. Yield is giving you 60,000 for both parts and vertical reinforcing. Okay, now let me look at this column. It has eight number nine rebars. Yeah, all the blue ones have eight rebars. I have number three ties at 16 inch of center. This is from the textbook, not intended to be for California, and this why 16 inches gonna be acceptable in other states. But in California, it's gonna be six inches. So I know right away that this column is not good to be built in California. Cross section area, A sub G is gonna be 16 by 16. As you see here, the tie size gonna be number three at 16 inch on center. It's gonna be small bar compared to this, number nine versus number three, you know. Now let's see here the steer ratio. It says here the steer ratio it ranges from 1% to 8%. Now let me see what is available here. I have AS is gonna be eight number nine. So you say this is gonna be cross section area for number nine. So it's gonna be eight number nine. Divided by the A sub G, 16 by 16 is A sub G. Now 
what is 8 times 1? It's going to be A sub S. Answer is going to be 0.03, which means it's going to be 3%, roughly 3.1%, which means this is good. We are between 1% to 8%. Any questions here? Don, are you there? Don Lee? Don, are you there? Edwardine, are you there? Yes. Okay. Um, can you help me with this A sub S? What is the ratio range that I should be within? What's the minimum and what is the maximum? Range? Oh. Uh... Is there a certain range that I need to be sure that the T ratios can be within? Or it's gonna be up to me. I can just put any steeration. Uh, it's the the ratio is the one percent to eight percent. Okay, thank you. And Caesar, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, what is the steer ratio? The range that I should keep the vertical uh, portion was within. You mean the 0 0.0313? The 3.1%? What, what is the 3.1%? Is this the existing or this is going to be the range? This is going to be the limit. Uh... Yes, Caesar? Uh, I think it's existing. Why do you think so? Lucky guess. I'm sure. What? I just guessed. I'm not gonna lie. Sorry. You just guessed. Okay. All yeah. right. Uh, Daniel, Zeki, Dan. Daniel. Zeki. Isa Mubarak. Isa. Yes, Professor. Yes. Can you help me with this question, please? What is the 3.1%? Is this a provided? Or this give be like the limit, the range? I think it will be the range, Professor. The 3.1 is the range? Yes. How did they come up with the 3.1%? Is it like a limit by code? Or this is a provide the existing that we put in there inside this column? A limit by code? Limit by code. This is incorrect, but this is fine. Thank you. So to repeat what I have just said a few minutes ago, I am checking here the vertical C ratio. To do the check, I need to figure out what is the limit. And the limit, as we know, is going to be 1% to 8%. What we have been providing is going to be A3 bar, number 9, the divide by 16 by 16 A sub G, you get 3.1%. So this 3.1% is not a limit. It is not a range. The range is 1% to 8%. The limit also is 1%, and the other limit is going to be 8%. What we have provided the existing is actually 3.1%. Any sorry, questions out there? Yes. Yeah, you just mentioned it being the uh, vertical steel, but the slide says longitudinal. Is that the same thing? It's the same, the same thing. The code called it. When you look at the code, it says longitudinal, right? But in reality, longitudinal is the same as the vertical, which means it's bars. Because it goes through the length of the column. Look at the length of the column. Column is vertical member, right? So this three bars are vertical ones. You can call them vertical. You can call them also longitudinal because they go through the length of the column. 
other bars are called got it, got it. thank you no problem okay now let me figure out the strength of the column i have again two terms concrete strength and this gives you the steel strength can we go with the easy numbers 0. 0.8 P factor for that column is going to be what? 0. 0.65. 0. 0.85, just constant. F prime C in this column is going to be 4 K sign. So I'm going to say here, this is going to be K sign. How about A sub G? It says here 256 because the column is 16 by 16. So I'm going to say 16 by 16 inch is going to be 256 square inches. A sub S is eight square inches. So I'm going to say you can call this A, S, or A, S, T. It's okay. So the total here, right, is going to be the gross section area, subtracting A, S, T, which means this is going to be area net for the concrete column section. Now I have the other term, second term for the steel, 60 is going to be F sub Y, the yield strength, and A, S, T is going to be the eight square inches total 688 kips. now with that i was able to find out the trends of this con in axial compression any questions on the use of this equation no questions now can i ask some questions or do you guys want to ask me francisco Francisco, are you there? Ali? Yes, I'm here. My question is, how much is the fee factor that I have used in five columns? Uh, how much for fee factor is uh, yeah. on six five. On six five, thank you. Daniel Zaki, can you help me with that? It's not here at all today. How about Jiyun? Yes. What was the fee factor I used in this example? I think Ha said it was 0 0.65. 0 0.65, okay. And for curiosity here, when it comes to the concrete strength, did we use the cross section area or did we use the net cross sectional area? Yes. Uh, net cross section. Net. Jose Duran. Jose, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, did I use a net section area or did I use a gross in this equation here? I use both. I use both. How is that? Jose? You have AG and AST. So, which one is a net cross section area? Is it AST or AG? AG. AG is a net cross section area? Oh, AST, my bad. AST is a cross section area, is a net. All right, this is incorrect, but thank you. Anyways, thank you. Now, when you take AG subtracting AST, now this becomes a net. So, AST is a cross section area of the steel. A sub G is the total cross section area of the concrete and the steel. When you subtract them, when you subtract AG minus AST, you get here the net. Therefore, this term here is the net, both of them all together. AG minus AST is the net. Like in here, 256 minus 8 is going to be the net. 8 is not the net, Jose, right? Now, I'd like here to check the tie spacing. I want to be sure that it is done correctly. 
as it says here, I have three requirements that I need to satisfy. Spacing maximum, if you remember, I'm gonna go back here a couple of slides, just to remind you. 48 times the pi bar diameter, 16 longitudinal bar diameter, least column dimension in California, six inch. Okay. Here's the first criteria. 48 times the pi bar diameter. This gave you number three. Number three bars mean 381 inch. Times 48, this gave you 18 inches. My maximum spacing here is gonna be 18 inches. If I try here 16 times the vertical or longitudinal bar diameter, 16 times, this gave you for number nine, should be, should be here also 18 inches. So I'm getting here same answer. Least column dimension. This column size is 16 by 16. So okay, 16 inches, give me 16 inch Y. Maximum spacing. For this type of columns, it doesn't say it was built in California. So I'm gonna say here, number three at 16 should be fine. Where do I have number three at 16? I'm gonna go back here. What was provide number three at 16? Since we're not in California, this column is okay. Now also I notice here that I don't have any cross ties. Someone's gonna say, what's a cross tie? Cross ties give you that thing that we put around the column, right? And the only way that you will need to add it if the clear spacing between these two vertical rebars is giving more than six inches. How do I know that? I'm gonna say from this line. If the spacing here, clear spacing between the two vertical rebars is gonna be less than six inches or within six inches, I don't need it. Once I go here beyond six inches, I need it. I say, okay, let me see what do I have. This drawing here doesn't show this cross line. So I'm not gonna be using it. The question is, does this make sense or not? I say, okay, I have your total of 16 inch. You're gonna say here minus three inches, one and a half on each side, correct? Because my target here, my goal is to figure out the clear spacing from the vertical rebar to the vertical rebar. How much is that? I have 16 inch, subtract the two cover, you have symmetry here, then you have the bar size, right? So you see here 16 minus two times one and a half minus three times one and 0.128 for the vertical bar diameter minus two times the tie by them. And then at the end, you divide this by two because you have two spaces. So, okay, let me try this. 16 inch minus, what is this two times one and a half? I'm gonna say this is gonna be the cover, the concrete cover. What is this two times three eighth of an inch? I'm gonna say this give you the tie size. How about the three rebars, number nine? So I'm gonna say this is gonna be four, three number nine. And then at the end, you divide here by two. Why divide by two? Because I have two spaces. Let me go back here, two spaces. I end up with 4.4 .4 inches. As long as it's gonna be less than six inch, so I don't really need any cross lines. Questions on the tie spacing? The uh, cover is measured from the surface of the concrete to the outside of the uh, ties, correct? This is correct. In this case, yes. Yes, this is correct. Any other questions? Jose Lara, do you have any questions? No, thank you. Okay. So Jose Lara, yeah. um, why did they say two times one and a half inch? Isn't it just one and a half inch? Why two times?
Y eso, ¿sí? Referring to the cover or to the tie size? I'm saying, why did I say here two? What is this two? What does that count for in this term? You see my screen, right? Yeah, I'm look, trying to look at my screen too. Okay. Why it says here two, not just one? Because wouldn't it look, wouldn't it be since you're looking at the 16 inches, you're doing the one and a half cover on both sides? Yeah, absolutely. This is correct. So I have here two one and a half inches. Thank you. You're welcome. I have another example. And look at this spacing. You see the clear cover is going to be one and a half inch to the time. So in actual drawings, this is what we show. But this is taken from an actual engineering drone. Um, this is here taken from the textbook. So it is not as accurate as the engineering drones, right? I chose here that I have A3 boards. Choose this is going to be 24 by 24 inch column, concrete strength of 5,000 psi, determine the maximum column axle load, capacity is four. This column pays on the code range of vertical reinforcement ratio. I'm going to be asking you, what was the code range for the reinforcement ratio? Daniel Zaki? He's not here at all today. Julian? Are you there? Juliana? Excuse me. Yes. Yeah, what is the range for the C ratio here? In columns. In columns, wouldn't it, uh, the range be from 1% to 8%? Yeah, thank you very much. So when it says here, for the code range of vertical enforcement ratio, it means I need to try it once with 1%, one with 8%, and see what range would I get in terms of the capacity. It's here a note or a hint. It says consider the code minimum and maximum C ratio. Here is the code minimum and maximum C ratio which is this one here. So, okay. A sub G, 24 by 24, right? Growth section area. I'm gonna have here two cases. One case, I'm gonna be using 1%. The other case, I'm gonna be using 8%. So here's the first case on this page. Next page is gonna be case number two when I use here 8%. First case, 1%. I don't know the bar size, right? I don't know how many rebars, roughly. I just see here a column, some, I'm gonna say, typical conventional reinforcement layout. So you see, if I take here 1%, it's gonna be 5.76 square inches needed. This is gonna be the minimum reinforcement needed. So I'm thinking here about maybe using eight number eight. I'm gonna be getting here with eight number eight, it's gonna be 6.32. Martin, are you there, Martin? Martin? Michael Rodriguez? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, so question here. What is this 6.32 square inches? Is this the limit? Is this the 1% or this is a provided that you are planning to put in there? Um, you said that the 5.76 is the minimum? Yeah, so, so this is the limit, right? Okay, yeah. So that's why you're going with number eight, right? Yeah. So do you think that this column, if I use here eight number eight, I'm going to be okay? I'm going to satisfy here the minimum code requirement for the C ratio? Um, as long as it falls in between the 0 0.01 and the 0 0.08. Right? So is this going to be larger than 1% or this is smaller than 1%? That's larger than 1%. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. All right. So what I have used, actually, if you take 6.32 divided by 576, I use 1.1%. So I'm good. I'm happy with this choice. How about 
the axial compression capacity, yes, this gave you 0.65 for the phi factor, right? 0.8 is a constant that they have in the equation. 0.85, this five is gonna be concrete strength, and this gonna be the net cross-sectional area that I need to use in my analysis. You can see this is gonna be A sub G minus A S T, which is A net. It's gonna be the steel reinforcing. I'm gonna be using here 6.32. So in my equation, I need to use this number. I'm not gonna be using the 5.76 because this actually my minimum reinforcement, but this is what I'm planning to use in this column. But that I have 1456 kips is gonna be my capacity. So great. Now let me try the 8% in the second case. I'm gonna be doing here AS max is gonna be 8%. You have 46 square inches needed, right? This is gonna be my max. I cannot go above this. So my choice needs to be below this. I decide here to use 28 number 11 with cross section area of 43.68 square inches. The actual row, which means a steer ratio, right? This row means a steer ratio used is 43 divided by the 576 cross section area. I'm at 7.6, less than 8%. So I look good. Nancy, are you there? Skin definitely? Yes. yes. All right. So just a question here. Do you think that our choice here was 28 number 11 was okay or it was not good? Just too much? It was okay. Why is it? Because we have 7.6 for that percentage. Okay, which very is good. Just than 80. Thank you. Thank you. Professor, I have a quick question. Hmm? Um, you know how you chose to use uh, 28 of like number 11 for case two? Yeah. And for for case one, you chose to use um, eight of number eight. Yeah. How, how do you know which one to use? Like, obviously, it fits in the range, but from the list, you know which one to pick and how many to use. Good question. Let's go back here and think about it. How many rebars can you fit in here? What's the minimum number of rebars that you need to put in the column? Um, well, there's eight here. What is the minimum? The column is 24 inch by 24 inch. Oh, would it be depending on the spacing of just 16 inch? Right, right. So here, Right, look at this. It says here, once you go up above six inches, you need to have one of these elements, right? One of these cross types. If this is here 24 inch, can I put only two bars based on this? No. So no way. So I need to have here three bars in both directions. So I'm gonna have here a minimum of eight bars. Now, my minimum here is 5.76. Can you help me and divide 5.76 divided by eight bars? You can say 5.76 divided by eight bars. How much is that? Uh, 0 0.72. 0 0.72 square inches, right? Yes. For each rebar. What bar size do you think I should go with if I have 0 0.72? What's the closest bar size to it? And it needs to be slightly higher than 0 0.72. So would that be the number eight? Yeah, but can you check it out? Yeah. Is it number eight? Um, I'm going to pull up the... Here's the table. The, the, yeah. Look at the table. If you plan to use number six, it's going to be 0 0.44, 0 0.6, 0 0.79. I want it to be slightly larger than 0 0.72. So I'm going to go here with... 
Um, number so number eight? eight, which is yeah, point so seven number nine. eight is the right choice. All right, let's go here to number the second case. I have 46 square inches. What bar size would you use here? You remember we said that the maximum that you'll find out in the market is going to be number 11. So I say number yeah. 11, cross section area is going to be 1.56. Say, so, okay, let me try this. 46.08 divided by 1.56. How much is this? Um, 46.08 divided by 29.53. Can I go to 30 bars? Can I add 30 bars? Or is it give you too much? Um, you can you add 30 bars because- No, has, you, you cannot can't. add 30. You need to be lower than this number. Lower? So if you put 30, you're gonna be going up okay. this number, right? So for the max, it would have to be lower and for the min, it'd have to be above. Right. So I cannot go to 20, to 30. So what is a good number? Don't forget that you have here two axes of symmetry. What's gonna be a good number that I can use closer to 29? Can I it go to be... 29, just 29 period? No, it's not an even number. I need a number that's divisible by four. Why? Because I have four corners in the column and I need to have symmetrical layout. So we're gonna say 28 is good. Yeah, because at each corner, I'm going to have seven reports. So I'm going to say 27 is good. Is 26 good? You say no. Is 24 good? Yes. You can divide by four, right? You're going to have six. So I'm going to say 28 should be good. I tried 28. It was lower than 46, right? Okay. The square inches, so the choice was okay. Okay, thank usually, you. no problem, but this is usually going to be based on experience. If you do design lots of concrete, it's going to be easy for you to get to. Um, in this course, I'm not going to ask you here to figure out number of rebars. I'm going to be giving it to you, but this is going to be a good opportunity so that you understand how we came up with number of rebars. Run the same equation. This gives you the concrete strength, steel strength. And which reinforcing? I did not use a 46, I use a 43. This gives you the choice, right? Net cross section area, 576, subtracting AST. P factor 0.65, my constant is giving 25, 39 kips for the strength. Any questions? Professor, could you? Yeah. Uh, 28 bars instead of 29. Um, I cannot do 29 because um, this column, if I draw here two axes, I need to have the same number at each corner. So number of rebars here is giving the same as here, same as here, same as here. So whatever choice that you need to come up with is going to be some number multiplied by four. Or the total number is going to be divided by four without any residuum. Okay, so it's just due to the this. So I cannot do 26. I can do 24. I can do 28, right? Because of symmetry, I need to keep the symmetry about these two axes, the X and Y. Uh, any questions?